So last time I introduced you all to the bean canerator, a generator I made using a bean can, some 3D prints, and some other miscellaneous materials. Today I introduce you to what's going on the bean canerator. I introduce you to what I call the drag on turbine. And the pun is kind of intended because it's a drag type turbine that's um, based on uh, some inspirations that I've uh, taken. And it's also, it also has, in my opinion, kind of a, a dragon wing sort of aesthetic. So first off, let's state the obvious. This is a VAWT or a vertical axis wind turbine as contrast to um, the what you normally uh, think of when you think of wind turbines, which is just a three blade horizontal design. Uh, this is a VAWT, so it's it operates on a, it spins on a, the a vertical axis to generate uh, energy. Now, there are two main types of VAWT. There are drag types, which is what this is, and there are lift types, also known as Darius and Savonius wind turbines, which are a type of each. Um, this turbine I have here is sort of a, um, a modified Savonius type. Um, I actually took more of, it, of an inspiration uh, from something known as a, a Grinsky model, which is basically um, this very um, peculiar or double helix design, and I thought that looked pretty cool. And there were claims that the uh, Ugrinskys were uh, more efficient than the Savonius turbines, and so you know I thought I'd actually uh, look into that, and that's what. Uh, kind of inspired me to design this. However, I sort of made a few modifications to it because what I did was I added these sort of uh, mini fins here. And the idea behind these fins is that, well, hopefully it means that we can capture more drag that's pushing in the direction of the uh, back of the blades, which in theory should increase the efficiency of the design. But Ugrinsky style uh, designs are actually popping up everywhere on the web. You can buy fully built um, 3D printed Ugrinsky turbines on eBay. I've seen a few eBay listings for uh, those types of things. And um, a chap by the name of Robert Murray Smith has actually made um, a f full scale uh, Ugrinsky, which you can check out on his channel. Now, this is only uh, one section, and I printed it this way to uh, save time. If I printed a monolithic full scale Ugrinsky, it would have taken me days, but since I cut this into sections, uh, then this is one section here, it took me about. Mm, Two thirds of a day to to print this, as opposed to multiple days. Because of this, a design choice I've made is to have these two posts here, which couple with some holes. It's a bit; it will be a bit hard to show you because it's already attached to the generator. But they're couple; these couple with some holes at the bottom of the uh, turbine section, and that means that you can print multiple of, multiple of these and sort of build them up into a larger turbine. And as you can see here, there's holes for um, coupling to the, or rather uh, gripping onto the shaft. I haven't used any screws here because um, unfortunately um, I forgot to adjust the tolerances and so the shaft was a bit too big for uh, the hole. And I ended up having to actually hammer this turbine onto the shaft, which is why you can see some cracking on the top there from my heavy handling. But nevertheless, um, that's a lesson learned from me and you should always adjust the uh, tolerances and play around with, you know, maybe printing this a little 
um, a few percent larger uh, to try and sort of make this a smooth fit. Another sort of integrated feature of this turbine is it doubles as a shaft coupler. So you see how I have this grip screw hole here and that's um, that works by uh, placing a, a trapped nut into the hole there and screwing the a, a tiny um, M3 screw into there to grip onto the shaft and there's a and there's another one at the bottom there and what that means is that you can actually um, if there's if you run out of shaft and you still have some room in the in the bore in the, in the middle what you can do is you can add another shaft onto there and you can actually um, couple two shafts together by having this uh, the turbine um, halfway um, between the, uh, the the um, the bottom and the top shaft and you can uh, grip onto both shafts thereby coupling them together and they, then you can stack on more turbine uh, sections now you might be thinking uh, isn't this turbine a bit small what sort of application would it have well an ideal application for uh, this kind of drag on style turbine is uh, stuff like wind walls or wind catchers and stuff like that where you're stacking lots of small turbine sections together into larger um, double helix turbines and then what you're doing is you're placing them next to each other next to each other you're placing these whole turbines next to each other in an array that um, effectively uh, create something called a wind wall and wind walls are actually more efficient at generating power than a single uh, wind turbine of the same size in the same space but enough babbling on how does this thing actually perform well it's not very windy outside and so in lieu of that i have this hairdryer now obviously a hairdryer is uh, very loud and so I'm going to use the magic of video editing to spare your ears. Anyway, I have my DVM here hooked up to um, from line to line, so let's give it a test. Okay, so from those test results you saw that, well, it spins fast. I think I need to work on my generator a little bit more though, as the um, voltage and current results weren't that impressive. Um, I think primarily uh, the cause of such uh, poor generator performance is due to, um, I think with the stator, I winded uh, too few turns on each coil, and so you didn't really get as much of a of a higher voltage and so the current was also uh, well the current also suffered because of that um, in the future um, I will look at uh, building another generator which perhaps will perform uh, a lot better and could perhaps uh, capture uh, some of the energy that um, is being generated by this thing I think because I think this is actually a pretty good design it's just uh, this sort of uh, lets it down and I think I don't think that's to do with the fact that it is a bean generator itself I think that's just to do with the fact that I didn't use enough wire additionally if I'd used a regular magnet configuration inside this thing instead of a a haulback configuration the voltage and current would have been much lower than it already was I think also a lot of um, the uh, wind energy made by the hairdryer um, was lost due to the fact that this is only one section 
of the um, of the turbine. What you're supposed to do really is have multiple of them uh, stacked on top of each other, and so I think uh, some of the uh, some of the the thrust, some of, some of the drag rather, kind of escaped vertically, and so um, you weren't really, you know, it wasn't really pushing against the the actual uh, blades themselves, and so you lost a lot of momentum there. Speaking of momentum, I don't think the the bearings I chose in here uh, are the best fit for this application. Um, I've seen people use stuff like skater bearings and stuff like that and other sort of like really low friction um, sort of bearings and they, they're a little bit better for this kind of stuff because um, even when you don't have a pre propelling force, if you have a low friction bearing, um, some of uh, that momentum will be stored and you'll still have a bit of a, a bit of a spin on your turbine um, for a short period after um, the the force of wind has has uh, stopped being applied to the blades. But yeah, that sort of um, concludes this project. Um, I will still look at uh, wind turbines in the future. I have a couple of ideas for perhaps better designs than this um, stuff that. Um, perhaps isn't as uh, wasteful of material, it still performs um, as well, if not better. And I'm going to definitely go back to the drawing board on my generators and see if I can improve that thing as well. But yeah, if you're looking for a uh, vertical axis turbine design for your uh, pint sized wind generation, then this may be a solution for you. I will upload this uh, STL along with the, all the parts from my beam generator to my Thingiverse page. Uh, and may I remind you also to uh, check your tolerances before printing. I didn't with this and I uh, paid the price for it. But make sure you do that. And yeah, that's about a wrap for this. If you like what you see here and you want to see uh, more videos like this, more practical experimental videos uh, about energy and um, other areas as well, then why not give me a sub? And uh, sharing this video uh, on uh, different platforms helps uh, the channel get exposure and raises the awareness of um, science, technology, and ideas for sustainability and that sort of thing. So yeah, thanks very much for watching, take care, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.